Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I find it really hard to get my head around the fact that when I see a baby girl in Ireland, she's got a one in two chance of living to 100. Half of baby girls born in the last five years will live to 100. That's really hard to understand. And that it's very likely that the first person to live to 150 has already been born. In fact, our longevity is increasing by five hours every day. So if you have a sister or a brother who's four years younger than you, they will live a year longer than you are anticipated to live. Now I see that young man there yawning. <laughs> and he's my son. <laughs> That's terrible, Pierce. Well, let me tell you something. Think about getting older. Think about the alternative. There is only one alternative. So listen up. <laughs> Have you ever thought about what it's like to be 90? What you would like for yourself at 90? Most people in response to that will say, I'd like to be independent. I'd like to be living in my own home. I don't want to be lonely. I don't want to have to worry about money. I want to be healthy. And they particularly cite, I don't want to have, I don't want to get Alzheimer's disease, or I don't want to have a stroke. When I'm sick, I want to be seen quickly by a professional who knows what they're talking about, and I want to get back into my own home quickly. And when I die, I would like to die in my own bed, in my own home. They're not huge asks, really. But our society is changing very rapidly with this huge altering demographic. In the 1900s, there were 22 working people for every retired person. Shortly, there will be two to three working people in Europe for every retired person. So that's going to really change the human resource available for health and for social care, available to us as we get older. So we have to think outside the box. We'll need to think of different ways to restructure our society. Now, of course, the scientists are working very hard on this, understanding aging and even reversing aging. And there was some uh, amazing experiments last year on mice, where aged mice had their genetic structures manipulated, their telomeres, their telomerase, in such a way that they didn't just stop the aging process but the mice became youthful. Their organs reverted into a youthful type of organ, significantly younger than when the experiment had started. And that's in mice, and that's a long way off. So is there anything that we can do more practical for now to take control over our aging and our lives to ensure the things that we cite as being important? And I'm going to share with you the importance of social relationships as being a powerful way of controlling physical and mental health. And a great original experiment that started this whole ball rolling was the town of Rosetta, a town of 2,000 Italian immigrants in the USA, like a microcosm of activity. And it became, um, to, came to the attention of researchers that people living in the town weren't dying of what was then the big killer in the States. The big killer was heart disease of men in their middle ages. But this wasn't the case in Rosetta. So researchers started to explore why this might be. And they looked at all the traditional things that we know are associated with heart failure, like genetics, diet, exercise, smoking. It wasn't any of these. In fact, quite the converse. They had 41% of fat in their, in their particular pizzas. And then it occurred to the researchers that the secret of Rosetta was Rosetta itself. People laughed a lot in Rosetta. They knew each other. There was a fantastic communal atmosphere. Three generations often lived in one house. There was great respect for grandparents. It was an egalitarian society. There were no suicide rates, very little depression. Wealth was shared, and if not shared, certainly not flaunted. And this started this whole understanding of social participation, 
what it is when you can create a vibrant, happy community. These people weren't getting sick as, though, as folk were elsewhere in the US. There was also a, a, a number then of subsequent experiments which confirmed this, hundreds and hundreds, which have shown that social relationships which are rich, social networks, social engagement is good for stroke disease, heart disease, arthritis, some cancers, and for Alzheimer's disease. In fact, a great experiment which studied older people longitudinally to death and examined the brains of those who had died, of course, compared brains of people who had experienced painful loneliness with those who had had a vibrant, happy um, life until death and who had the same pathology for Alzheimer's disease and found that those who had painful loneliness had exhibited Alzheimer's, as we understand it, during life, whereas those who had, despite the same neuropathology, a healthy, vibrant, happy, not lonely, did not suffer from painful loneliness life, did not exhibit the signs of Alzheimer's disease. Wouldn't it be great if we could recreate in Ireland Rosetta-type communities? How feasible is that, though? Are we gone too far? Is it, is it too impossible to imagine that? Is it too impossible, I say to Dublin City Council, to have the five-minute city, where we are never more than five-minute walk from any necessary amenities? That creates networks, that creates social participation, and enables independent living. I put it to you. If we recreate Rosetta throughout Ireland, and someday, soon I hope, when an external observer remarks, what is Ireland's healthy secret? How come older people in Ireland are living so much better with respect to health? It would be great if the response were, Ireland's secret is Ireland. Thank you.